The Grow My Cleaning Company podcast helps owners of cleaning companies just like you to grow your company and yourself so you can make more money and finally get the time and money freedom that probably got you into this business. Discover how to automate and create systems that allow you to grow like crazy without losing control. If you dig the show and want to show some love, subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes. It really helps. Enjoy the show. Hello, Cleaning Nation. This is part one in a two-part episode. Stay tuned for the next episode for part two. Enjoy. Welcome, everybody. Uh, Today is a renewed goals session. So, you know, end of the year, we always think more about what are we going to do different in the new year. And January rolls around and we're like, oh, gung-ho for our goals, right? And how we're going to eat different, how we're going to exercise more, how we're going to be better with our children, you know, all of those things, right? All those great intentions. And then July rolls around and we're like, well, I made some of my goals. I may, I may make progress, but there's those others that kind of just either fall by the wayside or we lose track of or whatever the case may be. And this is the perfect time of year to get refocused, to get clarity again. So we're going to think of July as January. July is the new January. (laughs) So in that spirit, I want to start a little differently today in how we uh, approach goals, because it's really been present for me lately, how important it is that we get clarity first about what we really want. Now, I know that what we want and goals seem like they just naturally are the same thing, but guess what? They're not necessarily. They're not necessarily the same thing. And we're going to talk about the distinctions, the difference between what do you want, what do you really want, and and goal setting and being specific about what goes into those goals. So just out of curiosity, um, who can give me an example of something that you might want that is different than a goal or have a goal that isn't necessarily aligned specifically with what you want? Anybody have any guesses on what it might look like, sound like to have a different goal than what you want? Any guesses? Have you ever had a goal that wasn't necessarily what you want? (laughs) Yes, Christina. Like a goal for pleasure, like to take a cruise. Um, Like that would be, that's what comes to mind. So that would be something that you want. Something that you want. That isn't necessarily like a typical, what you would call a traditional goal. Yeah. Got it. Good example. Okay. Anybody else where you have something maybe that you want that isn't necessarily a formal goal or that you don't think of it that way? I want you all to be thinking about this. Yes, Tom. I want to work five hours a week. And right now... That's not necessarily like structured as a goal for you? Correct. Okay. Right now, I feel my presence in the business is more than that a week, more like 15, 20, which okay. is okay. It's, it's way less than it was, but I'd like it to be like five, like reviewing okay. sheets and making tweaks. That's. <laughs> I like it. Okay. Fantastic. All right. Come on now. Uh, yeah, right. Ouch. No. Hey, I said we. I'm in this boat with you because I'm going to do this exercise too. Believe it or not, in preparation for today, I asked myself these same questions and I realized I had desires that were not yet goals. So I am joining you in this exercise. So there's always something lurking somewhere, right? That is a vague sense or something you've been feeling or it's calling you, but you haven't quite put it into that goal context yet. Now, I'm going to give you an example. Maybe this will help the rest of you trigger some inspiration or thought. 
something that for me came up, I'll share this just from my personal experience, is I had a, I have had a, um, a general sense, a general idea, concept, feeling like I, I want to help my daughter. She wants to move to Japan and she wants to live there. She wants to be able to um, not be under so much pressure because being an expat is a whole different type of lifestyle and all of that. And so she's you know preparing for that. I would like to be able to help her do that, to support her in that. And I have some ideas about what that could look like, what I might be able to do, but it's still... It's a desire, but it's not structured in a goal yet. So I don't really have timelines yet. I'm not really sure what the dollar amounts. You know, I I just have a vague sense. So this is a good example of I have an idea, but I'm not quite there yet. And And I can feel it as a desire. So is there anything else? that you feel now that like, oh yeah, now that you said that, or now that Tom has shared his or Renee has shared hers, there is something that I don't officially have as a goal, but it is in my heart, in my consciousness. And, and it could just be that you're so consumed with what you're doing right now that it hasn't, you haven't given yourself enough space to even imagine what else. It's possible. Sometimes we get so caught up in what we do every day that we don't have that. Yes, Andy. I want to be able to just make art and get better at it without like thinking, just be able to go to the studio and like sculpt without the pressure to have to make money to pay bills to, to do life. <laughs> I That's perfect. That is a great example of a concept an idea a feeling of you know i want to be there but i haven't quite made that bridge like what does that look like what what would that look like if it were in goal form we have not there yet okay fantastic anybody else that includes you miss Lindsay. if you have an idea too yes michelle can it be something even more vague like i would like to start another business yeah but i don't know what that's actually that's really great i like that even better too because if it's still in the concept phase like you're like i have this concept idea Hmm. buy another business or start another business but i don't know what it is that's perfect so it's like how do we move these things from ideas feelings i would like this kind of ideology to actually making them goals, turning them into goals. Okay. So I'm going to start where I start with all goals and that is clarity. Okay. Clarity. So if you have this idea, so Tom, you already started, you were like, you started to quantify, you were like five days or five hours, five hours a week. Like that's great. So that's a beginning start of getting the kind of clarity that will allow you to turn it into a goal. Like we're not there yet, but in that clarity, same thing with Renee, um, Angie, you started describing some of the, the details, some of the qualifiers. Okay. So here's a great way to get detail is always go to why. So if you had that, why would this be important to you? In what way? Why, what, would, what would it feel like? Um, how would you benefit? How would somebody else benefit if it involves someone else? In what ways would your or someone else's or both <laughs> so life experience change for the better? So get your real why. Why, why this important thing. So Michelle, in your idea stage, what is it about starting a new business? Why is that important? Why is it exciting? What about it? What do you want from it? Right? I would want, I would like to do something that I'm just more interested in. So something, 
yeah, something that's new, it's yeah. challenging, it's exciting. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe you want to, and I'm not trying to put words in your mouth. I'm just like helping all the, yeah. everybody else kind of stimulate that thought process. So like, well, you know, if I had something new, I could pour a lot more creativity into it. I feel like I could do something that's aligned with who I am today versus who I was 10 years ago when I started the other business, for example. Yeah. Right. But, no, that's a great. Yep. Okay. Well, is, I'm, I feel you. I get it. I get it. Right. And so, um, so everybody who's had something in mind, like Christina, I'm like, why would taking a cruise, like, what do you want to get out of that? What do you want to feel? What do you want to experience? What is it about that? That is so appealing to you. And the more specific that you can be, the more specific on your why and who it would benefit and how you would feel, the more likely you're going to be to a, to do it, to actually put it into a goal form and make it happen. And this is your opportunity to really dig deeper because you know, what happens a lot of times is we have these great ideas. We go, isn't that a great idea? I've had that idea for 10 years. (laughs) It's still a great idea someday and it kind of hangs out in this like cloud that doesn't ever really land all right so let's pull it out of the cloud and into our present those of you who were at, at the event you remember our present box so we put things in our present box that we want to create in our future that we are going to remember and practice now Okay, so yes, it's all about dreams. Like, exactly. (laughs) I love that. So, um, okay, so let's take a moment. I'm going to give you some time. Um, Lindsay, maybe you can help me with, let's, let's give everybody three minutes. And in three minutes, I want you to just don't filter, just write free from straight from the source, all the reasons why this would be awesome how you would benefit, how it would feel, who it would benefit as well. Okay. All right. So, uh, Lindsay, why don't you count us down? Ready? Okay, go. Uh, I don't know about all of you, but I was just getting warmed up. Did you notice as soon as you started writing, you're like, oh, and that, and that, oh, and that. And then you're like, what? Three minutes? That went by super fast. And yet, when I first asked this question, what, what's something you want that isn't yet a goal? All of you had to take a moment. We were like, except for Tom. Tom's like, no, oh, no, I know exactly what I want. <laughs> but everybody else had to take a moment and go, hmm, you know what? This is, yeah, I have to think a little bit harder. I need to put something, you know, I had to pull it out of the cloud and make it more specific, give it language actually write it down. So phase two, round two, we're going to go back and we're going to write some more. Okay. We're going to write some more about the why and what you're going to get from this. Now I'm going to share with you what I wrote so that maybe this will help trigger some deeper inquiry about why this is important to you and your connection to it. Okay. All right. So I wrote, um, help my daughter, eventually moved to Japan. Okay. Now she has said her timeline is about a year out. Of course, she's the one that's going to decide ultimately. But um, in that time, I want to be able to um, support her, generate enough income to buy her a small house. Believe it or not, in Japan, real estate is less than it is here. It didn't used to be that way, by the way. It's flipped. So their economy sucks right now. And um, if you're foreign, you can actually buy land and buy property in um, Japan. I didn't know this, by the way, just as a side note, Uh, fairly cheaply. So my idea is I want to buy her a little cottage style house in a place where she wants to live in the next year to two years. When she's ready, I want to do that. So that's kind of my clarity of, of narrowing it down and giving it some frame. Why do I want to do this? I want to do this because this is my daughter's lifelong dream. 
right? She wants, she, she just has said from a young age, she wants to live there. So I know this is going to make her heart happy. Um, I love the challenge. I love doing this because it's unconventional. Doing it to challenge myself as a mother to send my only child away to a whole nother country. That's a big deal. I don't know about all you women out there that have kids or even, you know, you men have kids. Like imagine sending your only child <laughs> to another country. It's like, it sounds scary. Um, but I also know that I love to challenge myself. So the challenge alone is something that's valuable to me, that's important to me. And um, I honestly would love to have my daughter experience adventure the same way I've ad experienced adventure. And then I also, by virtue of helping her get there, get to experience adventure because I obviously am going to go visit and be there and all of these. I envision a series of adventures because of this. And every one of them has novelty in it. And that is a human need, novelty. It's one of the human desires and needs. And I really lean into that. I love to travel. So to me, it's, I could just focus on how important it is to my daughter. But you remember when I said, these are your visions. These are your desires. This should be selfish to you. So I'm framing, even though this benefits my daughter, how I, how I get to experience it. Okay. All right. So this next go around, what I want you to do is I want you to now write what would need to be true. What would need to happen or be true in order for you to accomplish this vision? What would need to be true? What would need to happen? Okay. All right. So, Miss Lindsay, can we get another three minutes on the clock? Man, three minutes goes by fast. <laughs> Doesn't it? Amazing. Especially when we're talking about our dreams and our goals and visions and what we want in life. All right. So, who got more clarity, more clear, on some of the steps or elements or things that would need to go into having your vision happen. This is the process that we go through with any goal, but I'm purposely taking you through this process of starting with something more vague. Okay. Because a lot of times when we go through these trainings about goals, we talk about things that are um, very specific, you know, specific in common that we practice all the time and it kind of becomes sort of this rote thing. But when you have to think bigger, when you need to vision something that's like out there a bit, now we really want to dig deep. And for Michelle and Rodney, who have concepts that aren't so specific, it's even more important for the both of you, for example, who haven't locked down on the what specifically is it like Renee has her what already that's already formulated. So it's a little easier, I think, when we have that kind of specificity. But hopefully through this process, you're going to start getting more and more of a sense of what kind of business could serve to, you know, when you get the what do you want as a result? What's it going to feel like? Um, what would need to happen in, in order for this to this feeling and this experience to happen. So hopefully you'll start getting narrowing that down to what it might look like, what kind of business it might be. Because sometimes when we get clarity more and more about what kind of experience we want, we realize we realize that maybe the kind of uh, method that we thought we were going to use to get there changes. We're like, oh, well, maybe it doesn't have to be that way. Maybe it could be a different way. Or maybe it hadn't even occurred to you how, how to get there yet. 
Well, here we are, the end of the podcast, and you made it. Great job. Uh, I've got a little bonus for you before for sticking through with me, but like I mentioned before, if you got value out of this podcast and you want to show a little love, subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes, Spotify, wherever the heck you're listening to this thing. Share with a friend. Share the love. And as a special thank you for those of you that stuck with me to the end, how about I give you my personal phone number so we can text? It's a great way for me to get to know you, your business, your goals personally. So shoot me a text now, 602-932-6431. That's 602-932-6431. I am the only one who responds to these texts, and I will personally respond to everyone I possibly can as long as uh, this number is manned. I don't know how long we're going to keep this at the end of the podcast, so grab it now. 602-932-6431. Give me a text. Say hey. Can't wait to meet you.